Hi everyone, this is Celin from Blue Cala Patterns. Uh, recently I've updated my uh, Baronia Bowler pattern. Um, I wanted to go through some of the changes that I've made to the pattern. Um, right here I have a new copy of the instructions and you'll notice that in the update I haven't used photograph, photographs for this version. I decided to change to um, illustrations and diagrams. Um, so before you start, what I usually recommend you do is read through the instructions uh, from start to end. Make sure that you read them carefully because if you do have a copy of the old pattern, I have made quite a few changes in this new version. Um, not, not major changes, I think mostly just uh, improvements that make the bag easier to sew or um, some areas that I wanted to improve. Once you're done reading the instructions, you're going to want to prepare your pattern pieces. So here's where we have some changes. Uh, page 19 is your accordion gusset. This remains the same, so you'll want to print out one copy of this page, page 19. Um, another change has been to, sorry, um, the Body A pattern piece. Um, you'll want to print out pages 16 and 17 and make sure that you print out two copies of each, each of these two pages. I'm going to show you how we are going to tape these together. Um, for now, we'll just set them aside. And you'll also want to print out two copies of page 18, which is your bottom overlay B piece. So I'm just gonna grab my, these are my paper scissors, not my fabric scissors. So printing out the overlay is, is fairly simple. Um, and preparing it, I'd rather. Um, I'm just going to start by cutting the pieces out. However, on one of the pieces, don't cut out this portion. Leave this portion on the pattern piece because when I tape them together, I'm going to overlap the pieces a bit and I find uh, they, they stay together nicely and they, they won't come apart. If you just have them butted together um, without some sort of overlap, then I find they just tend to set the tape breaks and they separate. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. I'm going to finish cutting out the, these pieces. I'm going to cut one piece at the tape line, but the other one I'm going to leave this portion here, and then I'm going to show you how I tape them together. So now i finished cutting out both of my bottom overlay B pieces. You'll see one piece I left the edge of the paper in front of the tape line. That way there, I can do an overlap. I'm just going to butt the lines together. Put some tape. And then flip it over. And I'm just going to put another piece of tape here, and then it's really nice and solid in the middle. I'm also going to punch out the location of my purse feet, but first what I do is I just put a tiny piece of tape over the circle, and then I use my, I use my pliers. This is the set of pliers that I also use to punch out the holes for my rivets. And I just punch out the holes. And then later when I'm marking the location of my purse feet, I can just pop my, my pattern piece over top and mark the location. Now I need to tape together um, the four pieces uh, that I've printed for the body A pattern piece. This is your most important pattern piece. 
Um, what you're also going to notice is that I've started to include um, the remaining uh, items that you need to cut, the remaining pieces that you need to cut um, in the, a little box on one of the pattern pieces. Um, this is something new that I've started to do. So we need to tape together these four pieces. Uh, you're going to do the same as you've done for the bottom overlay B piece and you're going to leave the bottom the bottom edges of the paper past the dash line on the two top body A pieces. So you're going to leave this part here and this part here. Then I also would like to leave a piece in the middle for when I tape the pieces together at the tape line. So I just took my my ruler which is exactly one inch wide and I drew a line here and I'm going to do the same here. I'm just going to draw a line and then what I want to do is I'm going to cut at that line that I drew. It doesn't have to be perfect and then here. These are giant scissors, so they make precision cutting a little bit more difficult. And then I'm just going to cut straight down here. So now I've left the edge at the bottom and on the side here. And then for the bottom portion, again, I'm going to cut along the line that I drew. rid of the top edge on this piece. Sorry, this is extremely boring to watch. Especially since I'm having trouble with my giant scissors. Okay, now that I have these two cut, I'm gonna just I'm gonna cover the bottom piece over top of that piece that I left at the bottom of the dash line. I'm gonna tape these two together. And turn it over. Another long piece of tape here. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut out the rest. This time for these two pieces, you can cut away everything, but once again, you're just going to leave the bottom edge um, along that second top piece for body A. So I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to finish cutting this out, and then we're going to. Um, tape the two halves together and then I'm going to explain to you the new um, the new cutting method that I've that I've used for the the updated version of the pattern. Now here we go we have the two halves of the body a pattern piece so I'm just going to take the one that doesn't have the um, the wider edge and I'm just going to flip it over I'm going to line up the two center tape lines. You want to make sure, especially, that there's a um, your your dashed line here, and then you have a dashed line here, and then another dashed line at the bottom. You want to especially make sure that they are all lined up perfectly, and then together. Now, the reason why you want those to be lined up perfectly is because are going to serve different purposes while you are cutting all of the pieces for the bag. Alright. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, get all of my, my fabrics ready and then we're going to come back 
and I'm going to show you where you should be folding the pattern piece and how you should be cutting the different pieces to make your bag. Now the first piece that I'm going to cut from uh, body A is the exterior fabric. Now you'll see there are instructions directly on the pattern piece. So for your exterior, you have to fold your pattern piece at your exterior dash line and you have to use the top portion to cut out two of your exterior fabric. So I'm going to grab my big giant ruler and place it on the dashed line and I'm just going to just for now I'm just going to make a crease at the dash line. I'm going to take off my ruler. Then I'm just going to fold this entirely towards the back here. All right. Now, the only downside to this is that eventually your pattern piece will get a little bit ragged at the fold. Um, if you want to um, make it stronger here you could always put tape it just makes it a bit di more difficult to fold but I think it'll last longer if you put tape so before I start cutting obviously I have some corners here at the sides here my pattern piece I don't want to cut these off so all I do is I just sort of fold them in fold them in all the way like so Now, this is just one option um, in case you don't want to print out many, 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 many pattern pieces. However, if you're going to make a lot of this bag, you may want to print several copies of this. And just, instead of folding, just cut it up the dash line and you have this top piece that you're going to use to cut your exterior. And then you print another copy that is the full piece and you're going to use this to cut your main the back the main lining pieces for your bag and then there is a third piece that you would need where you would cut off at the bottom dash line and I'm going to show you how we're going to use that one and we're going to use that one to cut our foam interfacing um, a little bit later but I just I prefer just having the one pattern piece and using it for everything. So you do whatever works for you. Now I'm going to go with a little bit of a, a summer theme for this bag because it's almost summer here. And all you do is you place your pattern piece. Um, I use paperweights, put them down, and then I, I use cut with a rotary cutter. Um, I use the small size, I think it's 28 millimeter, because I find I can do curves really well. Some people prefer to use scissors, use whatever works for you. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this piece out, and then I'm going to show you how uh, we use the same pattern piece to cut out your foam interfacing and to also cut out your main lining pieces. So now how I have cut my um, two exterior pieces, I'm just going to set those aside for now. Um, I'm going to take my pattern piece now and I'm going to unfold it so that I have the entire pattern piece and I'm going to go ahead and cut my two lining pieces. This time I'm going to use the entire pattern piece. So I'm not going to uh, make you watch watch me cut fabric, so I'm just going to put my paperweights, cut these two pieces, and then we're going to cut our foam interfacing, which is the last piece we cut using this pattern piece. Now I'm going to um, cut my foam interfacing. Um, in the old version of the pattern, um, I had you do this further, uh, further along in the pattern during um, construction but uh, I decided to do it sooner. Um, at first I was concerned about 
everyone's uh, domestic machines being able to sew through the connectors and the foam and I thought it might be a little bit too bulky for a lot of machines but I think now a lot of bag makers have some fairly good domestic machines so um, I, I and I also feel it's a little bit um, better to to put the foam in right away and to have your connectors attached to the foam so you'll notice that the bottom of your pattern piece there's one last dashed line and it's called the foam fold line so this is the line that I want to to fold at this step before cutting now foam is obviously really thick and not exactly the easiest material to fold so I'm going to show you how I do this I I don't really fold my foam I just use the pattern piece and I draw out the shape of the pattern piece onto the foam so here I have my foam fold line is folded towards the back I'll put it this way now I have a really giant piece of foam here because um, I buy the Bozel foam, foam sorry the Bozel farm uh, foam in a giant a giant bolt and I forget how wide it is but it might it's very it's 45 inches maybe I'm not really sure it might be even wider than that it's it's just it's gigantic but it's a little bit awkward to work with um, and you'll see that now I'm having trouble fitting it on my table and you're definitely probably not going to be able to see the entire piece um, on the video so I'm just going to start here at the top edge of my foam here I'm just going to place the piece down put something here to weigh it down and I'm just going to draw the shape of the pattern onto the foam as quickly as I can and then I'm also going to draw the bottom edge of the pattern piece at that foam fold line If your ears are ringing, I do apologize. My cat has decided to scratch himself and ring his bell while I'm filming, of course. Okay, so now you'll see the piece here is drawn out. Hopefully you can see it. And then I'm just going to flip the pattern piece and I'm going to line up that bottom fold line with that line that I just drew. And then I'm going to finish drawing out the rest of the pattern piece. And because my piece of foam is so huge, I'm not sure if you can see the whole thing. Okay, so here we go. Now I'm going to just finish drawing out the rest. And then um, once I've completed drawing out the other half, I'm going to cut it all out. This is the final piece of foam interfacing that we uh, cut from the modified body A pattern piece. And hopefully you can see it, uh, might be a little faint, but there's our, our center line. And this center line you'll notice will come in very handy uh, further on during the construction of the bag. I'm now gonna be cutting my um, bottom overlay B piece. Um, I'm going to be using cork for the bottom overlay. Uh, once again, I find cork is really not the best uh, material to be fold cutting on the fold. I mean, you can if you want, um, but I prefer to do like the foam interfacing and just draw out the shape of the pattern piece. Um, I usually do this on the wrong side because if I make a mistake, then I can just draw a new shape. Make sure um, that you stay away from from the edge because um, the cork is thinner and 
can peel more easily along the edges. So I tend to stay um, about an inch, a quarter, an inch and a quarter away from the edge when I'm cutting out my cork. So I'm just gonna draw out the shape. I'm going to take my time drawing out the top edge because I really want this, the top edge to be as perfect as possible because it does show a lot on the bag's exterior. So I'm going to finish drawing out the, the, the edge, including the bottom, and then I'm going to flip the pattern piece and draw out the shape once again and then I'm going to cut it out um, and then once again we'll have that helpful uh, center line when we're trying to line up uh, the different pieces during construction that center line will be quite helpful. I've just finished cutting all of the pieces that I need to make my bag. Now normally I like to provide a cutting chart in my pattern if there are a lot of pieces to cut. Um, however, for this bag, there really, there really aren't that many pieces. Um, they're all listed here on page three um, in the left-hand side column. There's not a lot of pieces, so I didn't bother with a cutting chart. Um, if you want, you can just check off the items here on the page in pencil as you're cutting them and then erase all of your check marks when you're done. So I'm just going to go over all the pieces that you're going to need. Um, so as you saw in the beginning, I have my two exterior pieces and two matching pieces and fusible woven interfacing. I also have my overlay B piece. Um, you only need an exterior piece for this. Um, and this is the piece of Peltex. I use a sew-in Peltex. I don't really care for the fusible. And the dimensions for that piece are in the pattern, uh, which is three inches wide by five and a quarter inches high. Then I have all of my gusset pieces. I decided to go a little fancy and I fussy cut um, the piece that's going to be showing on the exterior when you when you open the zipper all the way. Um, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see um, all of the mermaids and some fish. And then I just used my main lining fabric for the inside uh, part of the of the gusset. Now you only need four pieces of interfacing because you don't want to interface both pieces of each gusset otherwise it will be too bulky when you're trying to top stitch along your zipper and I like to put the interfacing on the piece that will be facing the outside of the bag so when you open the zipper the part that you see that's the part that I usually apply my interfacing um, I also have which you saw earlier, my two main lining pieces. They're matching interfacing. Then I have my zipper pocket facing. Um, I do believe this is uh, a new, a new uh, zipper pocket technique that I'm going to be uh, adding in the pattern update. So you need a piece of your main lining fabric that is 11 inches wide by two and a half inches high and a matching piece of interfacing. And then to make it easy, I made my slip pocket and my zipper pocket lining pieces the same, uh, the same size. And I got a little fancy with my slip pockets and I did some fussy cutting. So you're gonna need two pieces. They're 11 inches wide by eight inches high. So you'll need two slip pocket lining pieces, two matching interfacing. And then also for the zipper pocket lining, same dimensions, uh, two pieces of lining, two pieces of interfacing. Now I'm not going to go through 
um, how I interface all these pieces. Um, you just fuse them to the wrong side with your iron or your press, whatever you may be using. And when um, I'm done interfacing all these pieces, we're going to um, start by interfacing our bottom overlay piece and installing our purse feet. Now one thing you may have noticed um, I didn't include in the cutting uh, in the video is the binding piece to finish the corner edges of the bag. And the reason why is because for the video I'm actually going to show you how to finish the corners of your bag without using the binding. Now you're probably wondering why I have used the binding method for the written pattern and the reason is because um, it, it was very difficult to demonstrate how to do it otherwise using either photos or diagrams. It's much, much easier to show it on video, which I wasn't prepared to do at the time that I wrote the pattern. So as a bonus in this video, I will show you how to finish the corners without the binding. And so you do not need to cut uh, those pieces. Now, before we uh, continue, we're just going to go through the remaining items that you're going to need. Um, so if you refer to the cutting chart, you're going to need two handle pieces. Um, I like to make the baronia with handles and then I add a crossbody strap. Um, if you prefer it to be a shoulder bag, just cut your handle pieces longer. Uh, but mine are going to be as in the pattern, which is 20 inches long by 4 inches high. So you're going to need two pieces and I'm using cork for that. So I don't need interfacing. If you're using fabric, um, cut them out of fabric and then you'll also need to cut matching pieces of interfacing. But in the pattern I'm just covering uh, handles that are made out of vinyl or cork. Um, you're also going to need your strap connectors. You need four pieces. I'm using cork again. Um, you're, you need four pieces that are two inches wide and seven and a half inches high. In terms of uh, the adjustable strap, I'm going to cover that at the end of the pattern because it is an optional piece and I'm going to show you how to make it how I make it uh, using cork. You can also make it out of vinyl. Um, the adjustable strap in the pattern is instructed in fabric only. So if you want to make it in fabric, you can just follow what the pattern says, but um, I prefer to make mine in cork. So I will explain how to do that at the very end of the pattern, at the very end of the video series. Um, in terms of hardware, um, if you're making the adjustable strap, you're also going to need a one inch rectangle slide and two one inch swivels. Um, I'm going to show you that at the end. So for now, all you need are four one inch rectangle rings and four purse feet with their washers. You're going to need for your interior zipper pocket, you're going to need a nine inch uh, zipper. I just use a number three uh, dress zipper. And then the most important part is your double pull zipper. Now the old version of the pattern called for a 30 inch zipper, but when you use a 30 inch double pull zipper, um, especially a pre-made zipper, you will find it extremely difficult to top stitch the second half of the bag. And I'll cover that a little bit later on in the video. Um, but now in the new version, I've decided to increase the, the length of the zipper to 36 inches. And the reason why I've done that is because you can open the zipper uh, all the way and it really helps with top stitching the second half of the bag. Now I'm going to be making my own double pull zipper. Um, I use zipper tape for almost all of my handbags. Um, so. I'm just going to start by cutting a tiny bit longer than 36 inches using my 
zipper tape cutting scissors. And then now, depending on the zipper tape, um, you might, you'll want to open it a little bit at the end and you're going to want to trim just one side. I'm going to show you close up. Just one side of the zipper tape, half an inch. And that helps um, put on your zipper pulls. But I bought this new zipper tape and I actually find that step unnecessary. So before I start, sometimes when you're trying to put on the zipper pull, I find the ends of the tape start to fray or like if you're struggling, it will start to fray and come apart. So I actually start by sealing the ends of my zipper with a lighter. And it's just going to prevent any fraying that might happen when you're trying to put on your pulls. So when you're creating a double pull zipper, you're going to want to have, and hopefully you can see this, you're going to want to have the um, the rounded end of your pull facing the center of the zipper. So I start by putting in one side and then I just tuck in the other side. Now one important part here is you want to have the pull and the zipper tape at the same place. You don't want to have them staggered because then your pull goes on just a little bit crooked. And then I just kind of fold it to the back here and then I pull. Sometimes you need to wiggle it on there and then pull down. It's that easy. So then I bring this part down. You want to make sure that you don't put on one pull crooked because then your your zipper pulls they won't they won't they won't be straight. You'll see one that's going to be a little bit tilted and then it just doesn't make your zipper installation look as nice. So same thing on the other opposite end. You want the rounded end going towards the center of the zipper. And you put in one side and then the other side and then again, I'm try to make sure that the teeth are meeting equally and that my pull is straight and then I fold to the back, hold and I just slide this on and then there, it's that easy. I'm going to set this aside for now and we're going to continue with uh, interfacing our overlay B before we move on to part two. We're now going to um, add our Peltex interfacing to the bottom overlay piece and we're going to install our per seat. Um, so first, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to have a look here, make sure that uh, my Peltex fits nicely and that there's half inch of space at either of the short ends between the edge of the Peltex and the uh, edge of your cork. And you can use fabric glue for this part if you prefer, but um, I really like using uh, double-sided tape. I've ha I, I found this, uh, this one brand that, that sticks very well and it doesn't gum up my needle. Um, I can't even remember where. I order it online, I think through a Canadian supplier. All right, so I just put a strip along the two longer edges and then I peel the backing. And then just glue it. Make sure that I have my half inch of space on either side here and that it's centered top and bottom as well. Press it down and then I'm going to use my pattern piece um, if you'll remember during the preparation where we're setting up our pattern piece I had punched out uh, the holes where the location of my purse feet so I'm just going to place my pattern piece and I'm going to transfer the mark And then flip it over. 
do the same on this side. All right, and then I'm going to use my hole punch. And I'm going to punch out the holes. Now this can be a little bit difficult because my hole punch doesn't have a huge amount of space here, but thankfully the cork is flexible enough where I can manage. Just punch out my holes. Alright, now you're going to take your purse feet and your washers. Okay, and I insert purse feet from the right side. And then turn it over. And then you spread open your prongs and place your washers and repeat that for the other three. Now if you had um, if you didn't have anything between this layer and the main lining of your bag I would have you cover the prongs with a scrap of interfacing, a fusible interfacing, just to protect the lining of your bag. But for the Baronia, you're going to have a layer of thick foam between the prongs and the main lining of your bag, so I find this that step unnecessary for this bag. However, if you're ever making a bag where there's direct contact between the metal prongs and the lining of your bag, you're going to want to put something to cover it up. I think I've seen people use tape, but I have so many scraps of interfacing that I just end up using that. Alright, and so now we have the bottom of our bag. Um, if you don't have glue for your Peltex, um, you can actually just sew it in place. I would sew all the way around uh, the edge of the Peltex with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance, but um, that's really personal preference and um, that's up to you what you prefer.